Good evening, everybody. So today the, we are happy to see uh, Will Trim, Leonid Peshkin, and Ksenia Petrova from Harvard Medical School. And they will tell us about very interesting project, uh, which is related to biology and data science image processing. And probably there can be the uh, collaboration organized. So you're welcome to dis uh, discuss the collaboration after the talk. So uh, this is about novel microscopic method for understanding the tissue aging. Uh, thank you very much again. And we'll please uh, start your presentation. Okay, thanks. Um, so yeah, I'm the only one here who doesn't know Russian, I suppose. The only word I know is Biegler, which probably isn't appropriate for today. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to talk to you very briefly. This is going to be a quite a, a rapid overview and not too technical of um, the sort of microscopy that we're using here, which is uh, the only kind um, in the world of, of, of its type. And really looking at the problems we're facing going forward for getting the most out of this technology. Um, and that is particularly in helping us understand aging at the tissue level. So my background um i'm currently a, a postdoc in uh, mark kirshner's and leon peshkin's lab um, and we're using this normalized raman imaging which i'll go into in the next slides um, my background was uh, broadly aging and inflammation and metabolism but here we're we're, we're hitting kind of new ground um so we're faced obviously with with fresh problems um which we're going to go into now so first of all, what is NORI? This is the name of our microscope, which was built by a previous lab member. It's normalized stimulated Raman spectroscopy imaging. Um, NORI is much easier to remember. Basically, it's a form of microscopy that is fully quantitative, um, and it allows us to analyze biological spe specimens, and that is single cells, whole tissues, live and fixed. So huge versatility here and importantly this is label free and um, the reason why that is so important obviously is traditional microscopy approaches using dyes or immunofluorescent is it's it's not too re repeatability person to person day to day that there's large sources of, of uh, variation there whereas this if i do this now or in five years time i get exactly the same image and exactly the same quantitative result and from this, we're able to measure protein, lipid, as well as uh, subsets of lipids, um, water, RNA, and DNA. But really, if you know the Raman spectra, which I'll go into on the next slide, of whatever you're interested in, you can quantitate it in a biological specimen. So just a brief overview. And can you see my laser pointer? Maybe Leon gives the thumb up if he can. Yes, yes yeah. we can see. I've got enough. So basically what we've tuned it to here is protein, lipid, and water. And the way we do this is focus on the CH3 and the CH2 bands. And without getting too technical for my own sake, um, what we're able to identify here, protein, this red line, has a very distinct CH3 band, whereas lipid, the black line, has a distinct CH2 band. So this is just... Um, essentially a, a chemical signature that we're able to detect with our microscope and that's effectively what we're doing to quantitate here in purple and here in in uh, green the protein and lipid respectively in these samples so that, there's a lot more to it but this is just a, a basic overview for now but most crucially if we look here um, on the left nori measurement and this is our quantitative readout of protein against an actual concentration of protein of BSA, uh, bovine serum albumin here for the reference, it is nearly linear, the relationship. And uh, that's how uh, quantitative and reproducible this technique is. Um, and there are previous papers, if anyone's interested to look at them, a PNAS paper from 2022 from Sun Yun Oh, the, the, the previous lab member who helped develop and build this technology. Um, so as a good example, it's best to show what the, the instrument can do. On the right is a nori image of a mouse kidney. And on the left is the same mouse kidney, but by H&E. And this is a traditional um, staining technique for uh, tissue slides uh, for anyone who doesn't know the background of this. But it's our way of traditionally visualizing um, organs under 
uh, microscopes. But this technique is now nearly 150 years old and you can see the sample is much more dehydrated looking, uneven, rough edges, ours looks. The way I, I view how cells should look in a tissue is, is plump and fresh versus dehydrated and jagged. So um, the important thing here is we have two color scales. And apologies for anyone who is colorblind. Um, red and green isn't the best here. But what we see is um, various tones of green to red with orange. And this distinguishes cell types by their protein and lipid abundance. And if we look particularly here, these very bright spots of green, these are quite important. They're, they're lipid droplets, which uh, are uh, found throughout the body in various cell types. But as we'll get on to soon, um, lipid droplets and lipid balance within cells uh, is fundamental to many um, pathologies and, and diseases more broadly, including aging. So as a first look, obviously this is a much more um, clean, non-disruptive form of microscopy and we get absolute readouts of um, important biological readouts from this. So I wanted to show you kind of what we've been able to do with it so far um, in the last year. We've really um, developed this from single cells to being able to image whole organs. And for instance, here you'll see a kidney from a mouse, and this is an entire cross section of a kidney. But the important thing is we're able to then couple this with what's called immunofluorescence, basically lighting up cells based on known markers for those cells. And this is just an example of a kidney stained with various um, immunofluorescence markers coupled with nori, and we can see very distinct cell types. And this all starts to lead us on to uh, the, the coming questions and challenges we're facing. But just to show you, if we take distinct regions here, we can see nori on the left, very clear, very clean protein and lipid. And then the immunofluorescence, importantly, is completely compatible with this. Um, we can see different regions here. And this really has kind of endless scope because there are tens of thousands of potential markers, dozens of cell types. So we've, we've got a lot of scope here to develop. But our next focus is using this tool, not just to show it works and to show we can look at tissues in nice, colorful ways. We want to really establish the combination of nori and immunofluorescence in organs to understand how disease or aging in, in that specific context is underpinned by changes in protein and lipid balance in cells because there is no other tool that enables us to look at protein and lipid as i've, as I've mentioned so really we want to um, establish new hallmarks of diseases and aging using this technique and we've been able to do this and i'll, I'll show in the coming slides some examples of models of disease um, but our coming study is is a quite a large one. It's going to be 12 organs, six to 10 rats per age group between three and 27 months old. And this is going to face uh, faces with quite a large um, analytical question and problem coming up. So again, just to touch base with traditional approaches, this is H&E of fatty liver, for instance, in obesity or um, alcoholism, we, we often get deposition of fat into the liver. And we can see here by nori, um, the, li the lipid shows up as green and whereas in H&E, it shows up as empty space, which you can't actually measure. It just comes up as white empty space. Whereas here, myocardial necrosis, this is a, a heart that has lost its supply of oxygen we um, actually see that the lipid is taking the place rapidly in this model. Um, the slides are actually moving without me doing this. Um, and again, if, if we go to a model of Alzheimer's here on the top versus control brains, we see that lipid seems to be fundamental to some of the hallmarks of Alzheimer's in these mice. And if we quantify the lipid and protein, which is obviously our core aim here, um, we can see that distinct cell types or markers of disease like protein plaques, for instance, uh, in Alzheimer's or lipid aggregates, I'm gonna go back there, um, are pretty, uh, pretty robustly separated using this technology. And, and this wasn't found before this uh, paper. And again, this is the PNAS um, Sun Yun paper from 2022. So 
what we found in in our recent work is you can also um, cluster cell types within complex organs by their protein and lipid. We see here in in these black dots, we've got three very rough clusters here. But if we couple that with the known cell type identifiers with immunofluorescence, we see that these cell types split entirely by their protein and lipid balance, which is quite a, a dramatic new finding. Um, but what we are interested in is if this is quantifiably distinct cell types, protein and lipid balance, let's say in disease such as aging or ischemic reperfusion injury in the kidney, which is something we've been modeling recently, can you quantify a, a very reproducible shift and that represents a disease phenotype or a phenotype of aging or the progression towards disease? And this is kind of where we're gonna be going next, but this requires quite uh, an intensive segmentation task. So individual cell types here, for instance, the tubules, um, we can see them visually, but um, being able to separate each one of those to result in a data point here um, is perhaps not as easy as, uh, as I first thought it might be and, and probably requires much more advanced uh, computational and analytical methods than I'm capable of. So, so on that point, I wanted to show you the protocol overview and the sticking point we have. So we get our sample, we stain it with markers. So the cell types are interested, light up. We then image it with the nori. The first round of segmenting these cells was hand drawing them manually just to show um, first the first batch of results. And then we've, we've experimented with some um, a variety of tools, including the segment anything model, elastic, um, but really none of them have performed particularly fantastic um, so far. So whilst this stage of the process, the first half is fantastic, it's, it's quite groundbreaking as a form of microscopy and offers great potential for understanding disease and, and aging in, in our next studies. This is where we're, we're getting held up a little bit and to really exploit the quantitative reproducible nature of this microscopy technique, this has to come in, into place. So really what we're trying to do is separate cell types, separate structures of interest. Uh, for, for instance, the nuclei, or in the case of a kidney, they have a, an inner membrane, which is, is called the, uh, the brush border. This can be a variety of organs. The actual structures aren't of interest um, in particular. We, we, we're going to apply, apply this to many approaches, but we face this great challenge of how are we going to move forward? How are we going to develop um, analytical approaches that can address this problem and, and move this technology forward and this technique forward to understanding disease better? First step is we've uh, obviously tried those tools I mentioned before. We've also set up a Kaggle um, where people can volunteer to have a go at this challenge. Um, so if anyone is interested, um, the Kaggle can be found under this title or, or we can supply the link, of course. But to summarize, the question is, can we take out single cells from complex organs, from um, animals and humans, using nori and you by using machine learning or ai approaches can we make new insights into biological aging and more broadly disease pathophysiology so just to acknowledge i guess some of the people involved here obviously leon who you know and ksenia uh, mark kirshner is the other pi in the lab and then the, all the kidneys were provided by our collaborators um, so just thanks to all of those people so anyone who has questions or a solution, please let us know. Okay, Th thank you very much, Will. Uh, maybe I will just uh, make a couple of comments. If you, oops, I was hoping you keep the slides. Um, can you try to return the slide and uh, go a couple slides back? Um, but. Um, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Couple slides back. Uh, that's it. Uh, right. So, uh, I just uh, want to uh, point out that uh, Will has stressed segmentation of cells. However, um, kidney specifically is a very 
a complex uh, organ um, with a rich structure. And um, I think that's what makes it very attractive uh, for modeling. There are structures at multiple levels, and um, you could think of starting to, like the probably the easiest uh, challenge here is to find nuclei. Cell nuclei are nice, roundish, elliptical shapes, um, uh, pretty easily identified um, from abundance of uh, protein. Um, uh, yet there are some challenges because uh, they're not always in the focal plane, um, right? But uh, quite doable. And it's sort of a textbook um, machine, um, textbook image analysis task to identify nuclei, right? Then once you identify nuclei, um, you imagine it's easier to find cells. Once you identify cells of different shapes and you could assign different cell types, those could be assembled uh, into um, ele structural elements like uh, glomerulus, uh, like um, uh, tube, uh, tubules of different uh, kinds, um, and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, uh, one aspect that we face uh, already is that many pipelines or uh, potential collaborators tend to think uh, in this phased uh, manner, right? That you maybe first identify nuclei, then cells, then bring cells to get, uh, together into uh, tubules. Um, Whereas I imagine that proper machine learning uh, approach here is um, bi bi-directional information flow, right? If if we think of how how do we actually parse this, how does human eye parse this picture, uh, the information flows both ways. Um, identifying... Uh, elliptical shape of a certain size as a nucleus is informed by local context and vice versa. Uh, okay, so that's I, I think that's an important uh, point um, about this particular challenge. Not all organs are going to be uh, um, hierarchically structured like that. But yeah, anyways, enough said. So I think we can open for uh, questions and feel free to ask questions in Russian. I will translate for Will or respond. Thank you very much, uh, both Will and Leon. So uh, uh, let's maybe first ask Xenia if she has some points to make. Yeah, now colleagues, you can unmute yourself or write the question in the chat, up to you. What's uh... Uh, Ksenia, do, do you hear us? Um, pr probably she, she has a connection problem. Mm. Uh, so we can wait for the questions. Uh, but uh, another point, uh, Will, maybe you can uh, look, uh, show you this Kaggle data set. I have seen there is lots of information. If you can just briefly go through the share the screen with the this Kaggle data set and just briefly yeah. say what is there if it's possible okay yeah I'll load it up so colleagues uh, repeat please your main task in this collaboration Okay, so I I think it will become more apparent after we show the Kaggle. Yeah. Okay. Can you see um, the screen again, the Kaggle? Yeah, we see it. Okay. Yes. So um, as a as an overview, then um, on here we've uploaded uh, ten just representative healthy kidneys. So while 
we're we're interested in many different organs as i mentioned um for now we have data in kidneys so this will only be the kidneys what we have is a description of the data themselves what the structures represent what the colors represent within the image files um and then we start to tell you what the structures of interest are for instance brush border which we can see you can see my mouse yeah yes Yes. Um, which we can see as a, a bright green stripe, lumen, black space, um, nuclei, as Leah mentioned, these very uniformly round, bright red dots, because they, they contain no lipid, of course. And then everything else that remains represents cytoplasm, which we want to quantify the protein and lipid with. So basically what we want to do is we want to segment these regions of interest and a tool that will do that without me having to hand draw everything. Um, we then provide a little overview in the kidney specific context of types of tubules um proximal tubules distal tubules collecting ducts now i'm not a kidney biologist and maybe there's no kidney biologist here so the actual biology of these tubules isn't so important it's just knowing the features of these shapes i suppose um and then obviously what we go into next is some examples of um, the manual segmentation here on the left. Uh, the, the white line is what I've drawn. Uh, and then some examples of good segmentation using elastic, for instance. Um, but the elastic really wasn't a reproducible, robust tool for this purpose. But basically segment from this image a tubule, a brush border, a nuclei, they, those regions of interest. And from that, you get mask where from that mask i can use that roi to extract the important protein and lipid data that this microscope um, collects and we've also included some structures to ignore because while they're important to kidney biologists they're just peripheral to our initial aims here um, and then we have a list of data files um, it actually looks like I uploaded 20, so there are 20 files, um, each representing an entire cross-section of a kidney. Um, so, so that's may, maybe I could... what the Kaggle represents. Sorry, sorry Will. Uh, so maybe I can offer uh, some remarks as well here. Um, uh, let, let's think about uh, aging or disease uh right that's what we're uh trying to study using uh this tool uh what kind of changes do we expect to observe between young and old kidney um uh, we're measuring uh let's focus on lipid and protein right again if it wasn't obvious we're not measuring specific lipid or protein uh but um distribution of lipid and protein so you could imagine that uh old kidney just contains much more lipid than young kidney overall as a tissue right we would notice that we do not need any image parsing for that you could imagine that the overall uh level of lipid is about the same but lipid has moved from uh, uh, glomeruli in young kidney out of glomeruli in old kidney. In order to detect that, we need to know which pixels actually belong to glomeruli. Uh, you can imagine that lipid has moved into nuclei in cells, and maybe not in all cells, but only in cells constituting a tubule, uh, right? So uh, what we're looking to get out of this um, is a parsed image. So each pixel has an attribute. Is it in, is, it, is this given pixel part of a nucleus or not, or cytoplasm or cellular membrane? Um, or maybe a necrotic tissue or a void, um, right? And so each pixel has multiple attributes. I am in the nucleus, which is in the cell, which is in the glomerulus. 
Does that make sense? Did I uh, answer uh, the question of what we're trying to get out of the parsing? Should uh, I repeat yeah, in I, I Russian? <laughs> And Maria, uh, your question was uh, now: Is it more clear or less clear, Maria Fralova? Thank you very much. Uh, can I ask? I'm sorry, just I'm in the bus. It's very bad connection, and uh, it's very interesting uh, task. But I'm absolutely new in computer vision. I correctly understand in this uh, direction. <clears throat> learning and uh, my question is uh, what should I do maybe some libraries and uh, to participate to take part in this project well if you are interested in this project and you're new to machine learning and image analysis uh, you would probably want to team up uh, with somebody uh, who on the contrary is new to uh, biology and kidney physiology but is an expert in image analysis and machine learning uh, i would say generally speaking um right uh, ksenia what do you think where are you are you with us here i'm sorry i just wasn't <laughs> uh, so what 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 was the question um, uh, how to catch up with machine learning and image analysis tools necessary to help with this project? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, um, <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> um, yes. I think, uh, you... think maybe, I don't know, I am... Um, uh, depending on the, I don't know, results, or the, uh, if we will actually get some uh, potential collaborators, we could try to, to uh, what Alexander suggested, to make some, uh, I don't know, pet project uh, thing, if anybody is interested. Uh, uh, but it also depends on how many actually experts uh, willing to help us, we will find. So, right. I, I don't know. It, let I, let I me... Let me return the question to Maria. Um, what makes this an interesting project to you? Why why are you uh, excited about participation? Uh, just, I, I think I, I will have the same task uh, in my future, maybe very near future, uh, very close I future. See, you anticipate <laughs> facing similar challenges and you would like to learn uh, ways to handle that? Is, yeah, I I, okay. I have uh, I have uh, some experience in uh, data analysis and machine learning, but uh, more with uh, sequential data. I mm -hmm. it never. Okay, okay. Maybe there is some <laughs> quick, quick, <laughs> uh, quick introduction right. tutorial for for such people uh, like me. Well, this is sort of a, uh, I would say, a new challenge. So um, uh, I wish there was a tutorial. I would, I would actually study this tutorial myself how to approach this. Um, I'm afraid not. Uh, all right, more questions, comments from the audience. Colleagues, don't hesitate to ask questions. Vladimir, please, guys. Yeah, May I ask in Russian? Please. А, спасибо. Просто я не уверен, что на английском получится правильно. Конечно, сказать. я переведу. А, к предыдущему вопросу, чтобы неплохо было бы знать в компьютерном зрении, какие библиотеки или какие задачи. Ну вот э, можно было бы попробовать в первую очередь OpenCV. Это работа с цветом, работа с гистограммами и извлечение каких-то статистик на основе цвета. Я так понимаю, что тут у нас есть всего как бы две размерности, то есть это светлый, темный и зеленый, красный. Я верно понимаю? Uh, uh, нет. Uh, в, 
в данном случае э, ну, мо можно начать с простого, действительно, потому что зеленый, точнее, степень яркости зеленого отражает липида, а степень яркости красного отражает уровень белка. Но, в принципе, может быть значительно больше э, сигналов параллельных. Потому что есть еще вода, есть нуклеиновые кислоты и есть антитела, которые показывают всякие важные маркеры. Uh -huh. uh, ну вот, это к вопросу о том, что можно было бы какие-то uh, статистики попробовать вычленить при помощи OpenCV. Ну и, конечно же, нужно переходить больше в сторону нейронок, нейронных сетей. Это задача сегментации, это задача Инстанс-сегментация – это задача семантик сегментейшн. Это задача… Сейчас, секундочку. Е вот, если у вас опыт решения подобных задач? А, по сегментации, конечно, есть. Так, а вот… Ну, как бы… У сейчас, кого? Секундочку. Вопрос ко, ко всем в аудитории. У кого есть опыт решения подобных задач? Uh, так сказать, парсирование uh, изображений. Извините за мой рунглиш. Я знаю Машу, у Маши есть опыт. Надо почему-то молчить. Маша. вот Борис поднял руку, но можно голосом Борис, если... Да, здравствуйте. Спасибо за доклад. У меня есть опыт компьютера вижения но не именно сегментации клеток. Вот. Но я примерно знаю, какие методы применяются. Я начал сегодня разбираться с этим датасетом. Ну, не с датасетом, с данными, с изображениями. Вот. Но чтобы что-то конкретное сказать, я думаю, надо несколько дней поработать, что-то попробовать. Ага, замечательно. Well, I'm just asking who has experience with such data sets and... Uh... What uh, is getting initial feedback here? Um, Leonid, uh, so what, as you describe the task, it is, uh, seems to be quite complicated. You For each pixel, you want to get something like a parchment. Uh, what, what is, it's, for me, it's a little bit unusual. Yes, so kind of what task I, Sure, this is kind of so there are many, many subtasks here, right? The, uh, the first subtask is segmentation of tubules. Uh, this this uh, kind of, this is a mosaic of tubules and we presented uh, just segmentation. So then uh, each pixel has a binary attribution, generally speaking, right? It's just black and white. Either the pixel is part of the border between elements or it is within some element, um, right? So the, this, the, if that can be solved, that's already helpful. We could segment, separate elements, and uh, um, get some some analysis per element. Uh, right? Is that clear? That's not the best and the most helpful way to formulate the problem. But just segmenting the tubules and glomeruli uh, is helpful. I can, uh, Will, uh, is it possible you, you show the tubules on, on this uh, Kaggle data set? There should be, if you go up or down, there, there is... Just... If you just go into annotation, right, the sample annotation, I don't know if you uploaded any sample segmentation there. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Here. Zoom uh, in a little bit. Where is tubulus? tubulus? Anything within the white line here represents a, a tubule. Um, I, thought it, I, here... I, thought that, I thought it is a cell. No, it's not. No. no. Each tubule is made up. Uh, why don't you zoom in even more, Will? Yeah. Uh, where are uh, the cells? This okay, is... so first of all, do you see bright red uh, ellipses? Yes. Okay, smallish. Those are nuclei. Okay, okay. Okay, so now uh, around each nucleus, there is a cell, and cells are arranged into 
elliptical shapes themselves. So, mm -hmm. okay, with this, maybe, Will, maybe you can just uh, point. I don't think I can point to anything. You can see my mouse? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, effectively, the for, for kidneys specifically, uh, individual cell type extraction is incredibly difficult because we see here in this shape, there are maybe eight cell types or eight individual cells that make up this. So for kidney, it's not quite so easy. So we're treating a tubule as one cell proxy. Mm -hmm. In many other organs, um, we're going to be faced with different structures and kidney is slightly unique in the sense that cell types are incredibly hard to pass apart. But um, in other organs, it's going to be individual cells you'll be able to see. For instance, in the liver, you'll see you know, uh, hepatocytes quite clearly. Um, so we're treating this as one cell. Okay, and so we just asked uh, segmentation to this uh, tubules. Um, uh Yes. Uh, 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 so maybe you can let me share a screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was great. Okay. The, okay. Never mind. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Uh. Just a second. Make it bigger. Okay. So uh, here is a, a good example, right? Over here, uh, you see my mouse pointer, right? Do you? Uh, Do you see? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So these are two tubules or two cross sections of a tubule. Here's one, here's another, and uh, uh, let me uh, show you an outline of one cell. It would be something like that. Okay, so this is a nucleus of this individual cell, and then there's another cell immediately adjacent to it. This is a nucleus. Here's another cell and the nucleus of that cell. Right, do you see? So there's this uh, 10 or so cells holding hands of uh, Haravodam and uh, uh, together they make a tubule. Is that clearer now? Yes. Okay, good. So now if we're back here, so what I was showing over here in the subfigure D is this part of an image, right? And so you can see just by the color that, and here we have protein, lipid, and nucleic acids, right, uh, DAPI. Uh, um, so you could see that uh, just the color of this is like kiwi, and it's different from what you get over here, right? The comp this composition is different. Uh, so again, again, let's see. Uh, if I can zoom in much more okay uh, into the structure this is the max um uh, right so here is another tubule and this are uh, nuclei does this begin to make sense uh yes so, so the, the the task is uh, to uh, find to segment to this tubulus. Is it correct? The first task. Yes. Uh, okay, and this task is uh, kind of at what stage? You already uh, kind of almost solve it, or it is uh, not solved. Uh, so we have uh, uh, many images which were segmented manually. Okay. Uh, and that can be used as a training set. Okay. And then there's some hooky pipeline which does it automatically poorly. Right. But uh, so segmentation is useful, but not the most interesting 
I would say. Maybe we'll disagree. Uh, we would like not to just segment because segmentation is flat annotation. Uh, right. So, so what does segmentation allow us to do is to map this image into the set of values per tubule set of in so we would integrate protein signal within this object and within this object right protein and lipid within an object like that so we would map the whole image into set of total lipid and total protein per tubule does that make sense yes okay but we would also want to integrate uh into Protein, total protein and total lipid per cell. Cells are pretty hard to segment here, but not impossible. Uh, nuclei uh, seem to me pretty easy to find. And so then we would want to uh, maybe not get uh, perfect cells out. But since this is a nucleus, you could catch some area around this nucleus as good representation of this cell versus this other cell versus this other cell. Uh, so that would also be of interest. Uh, so then you could ask questions like, uh, do you have cell death within tubules of certain type? Perhaps with age or disease, uh, some cells are dying or lipid is moving into some cells, but not others. Maybe there's increased heterogeneity of protein and lipid uh, within the cells of certain tubules. Uh, can you continue sharing, please? Oh, you okay, you want to see it again. Uh, I think it's actually more useful if we go back to Kaggle. So if Will shares uh, Kaggle, because the, there was a very nice representation of segmented image there, um, which I just saw out of the corner of my eye when we quit. Can I ask uh, a question? Uh -huh. Just a second. So do you see this, uh, the topmost of a series of three uh, image where each element, yeah, this one, each element has its own color? Yes. So the... Okay, those are segmented tubules where each tubule has individual color. Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. You, someone had a question. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, the first stage is to segment tubules, and then we need to segment individual cells inside tubules. This is exactly what I was hoping to avoid right uh, uh to to have a phased approach uh my understanding and maybe i'm falling behind is that this should be solved in parallel where different layers of segmentations are talking to one another i'll repeat in russian um опять же я когда-то до того, как перешел в биологию, занимался искусственным интеллектом. И, возможно, я отстал безнадежно. Очень может быть. Но мне кажется, что вот этот image parsing должен решаться не в таком фазовом режиме, когда мы сначала находим ядра, потом находим клетки, потом находим tubules, а решаться параллельно. Может быть, Ксения со мной не согласится. А вы топологию не пробовали случайно? Мне кажется, топология здесь Секунду. подошла бы. Потому что можно прыгать с разного уровня абстракции, от мелких деталей к крупным переходить. Если какой-нибудь, там, не знаю, не знаю там альфа-комплекс сделать, ну, какие-то симплексы создать и уже из них фичи как бы да, создавать. Да. Нам бы хотелось, чтобы попробовали вы, чтобы вы попробовали, нет, чтобы нет, у вас нет, получилось. Нет, не пробовали, я хотел узнать, может ага. быть, есть была какая-то идея с топологией. Значит, мы разговаривали со многими компаниями, которые продают свои 
так сказать, разработки и обещают, что, все, что это типичная задача и все сейчас сработает. И, как правило, после того, как они, так сказать, несколько недель поработали с нашими данными, показывают, что у них получилось, получается у них не очень хорошо. Я понял. Значит, понял. Есть... Хорошо, попробуем, Ле конечно. Ле Леонид, а что именно, что, что, что нехорошо? Вот какая да. боль? Ну, ну, какие возникают проблемы в данном случае? А, значит, либо некоторые трубочки слиты в одно общее, либо одна индивидуальная трубочка разбита на несколько это, э, не, неправильно разбито на несколько. А, либо есть какие-то области, которые вообще не сегментированы. Да? Ну, то есть... Э, но это как бы... То есть модель плохая, да? То есть как бы, но... Э, да. Э, да, но тут... да, значит, что здесь, что здесь, мне кажется, особенно интересно в, этой, в этих данных? что у нас э, нельзя об этом думать как о двухцветной или трехцветной задаче, потому что каждый цвет э, несет независимую совсем информацию, да, в отличие от, так сказать, реальной жизни, от фотографий и, и роликов реальной жизни, где мы в трех цветах, где три цвета очень между собой коррелированы. Э, здесь три независимые плоскости. Mm -hmm. э, так сказать, и поэтому э, какие-то из элементов, допустим, значительно лучше видны, э, если просто посмотреть на белок э, на каком-то уровне. Например, ядра видны хорошо, если смотреть на белок. Э, мембраны видны хорошо, если смотреть на липид. Э, э, но как же заставить между собой обмениваться информацией, понимание, где ядра и где мембраны? Ну, это обычно... So on one hand, on one hand, I don't think that this is a deep learning uh, application. If anything, we need again. I might be not current, but I think we need much more data in order to just throw it at a deep learning approach. So I expect somebody who understands how this is done would. Uh, kind of manually build um, convoluted neural net architecture which would reflect the domain and then train it. Okay. Just about the data. So we have only three channels, is it correct? Or... Uh, no. Uh, uh, right. So there are some uh, for each cell type and each tubule type, there are particular markers, proteins expressed in those tubules and cell types. Is that clear? But uh, how it's represented we, the data? So we have uh, ways to stain for those specific markers. Uh, we would rather, right, so in principle, in the future, we would rather avoid it because this is lengthy and expensive project. But, uh, right, so we think that protein and lipid is enough and geometry. But presently, we also have this antibody staining for markers, which are very helpful. When you say proteins, that, mean, that means just all the proteins, because we have 20,000 proteins in the kind of... No, we're yeah. talking about three or four. Here, right? That's right now. Will is zooming in to the relevant proteins. So, okay. uh, those those are just uh, four stains, which uh, pretty much define the type of uh, element, right? So you see, there is this. Yeah, Will, maybe you can explain better uh, why this specific proteins. But these proteins, they are different for different uh, uh, pictures, or they are always the same? No, for, so we... um, basically, in, in the kidney, if we look at this example here, on the left, we have our nori image, which is total protein. But we, before starting this project, didn't realize that tube would split just by protein and lipid entirely. So what we did is effectively using target proteins and these specific proteins don't matter. We essentially just assigned a color label 
to known cell types. So then if we wanted to get the purple cells, we would label them with this marker to make them purple. The red cells would be labeled, the green cells would be labeled. And this just targets one protein that is specific to a certain cell type. So it's like a name badge, a color-coded name badge for each cell type. But it, this is also not a uh, technology, or this is different? This is traditional immunofluorescence. Um, so just antibodies binding to proteins of interest. Okay. But this is just so we can assign a label to the NORI captured data. But you have this data for all the uh, your pictures, all the images, or it's just for small... Every Everything in kidney has this color coding to it. So we can then assign a name or biological relevance to a structure. Okay. Okay. Uh, but then that will obviously vary tissue to tissue. These are just markers for kidneys. In the liver, we'd use very different colors. But, but going back to the question, uh, what is the what is the task? So one task is this uh, segmentation to tubules. Uh, what are the well, other tasks? Uh, so let's let's get away from the kidney and uh, look at my face for a minute. Uh, okay, uh, you could ask questions about what you see from my camera, right? You could say, "Here's uh, an eye." You know whether it's left or right. You know that this eye is within my face. And you know that my face is in front of uh, some background, right? This is what I call image parsing. Okay. You could, yeah, you could... That's a complicated task. How to split it into some uh, smaller... Uh, so that's task which so, is you want to focus. Well, I'm hoping to give you a bunch of uh, pictures where eyes and faces are labeled and for you to learn a model from this data. Okay. Uh, yes, this is ambitious. This is probably too ambitious. But ultimately, that's the kind of work and the kind of collaboration uh, we would want to establish. But uh, yeah, in the immediate future, if you are able to uh, accurately segment and provide this kind of shallow uh, result, that is also very helpful and useful. Okay, okay. Uh, colleagues, any other questions, comments, suggestions, uh, whatever? So you have multimodal data? Yes. Oh, nice. Uh, did you think about uh, predicting one modality from another? Uh, I mean, uh, it, it's clear that uh, there is a lot of mutual information. All right. Again, uh, Will has demonstrated that we could separate different kinds of elements just from protein and lipid, uh, which we did not realize before we started and that's why we have all this additional staining um right so it, it, yes uh, to some extent it's going to be predictable some modalities are going to be predictable from others there is redundancy in, in all the staining uh well okay uh, with multimodal data we have um uh more information okay uh and uh from the example you shown about your eye, uh, you want to describe somehow what's happening on the image. So yes, I could ask many interesting questions. Right? Imagine that I gave you a, a million pictures with faces, eyes, and noses, and you build a model. I could turn back to you and say, "What is, on average, the ratio between uh, the area?" taken by an eye to an area of the face, right? And so if you're able to parse new data, you could then compile some statistics of what's on average the differences between the size of left and right eye. You can go and parse. I don't know uh, ahead of uh, you know, this modeling what questions we would want to ask, but this is exactly the 
appeal of building a model from data? Mm, well, uh, this sounds like a reasoning model, some kind of reasoning. So well, well, once you're able to parse the parse this image, I will do the reasoning, right? I would just ask you to export all of the objects from each new image parsed according to the model. And then I could do a statistics. I'm not asking you to build a large language model for me. Uh, okay, I'm trying to understand. Uh, we have to segment it in multiple layers. Okay, in each layer we can uh, do clustering and uh, make some uh, some predictions or some some ana analysis from from each level and somehow uh, aggregate the data. All right. Yes. Like, uh, look back at the slide which Will is sharing now. Uh, right, you, you see the nuclei. Mm, yeah. Right. So, uh, when, let's start with that. Uh, you have a, a pile of images with um, this data. Can you reliably identify nuclei? Uh, I guess we can do that. It looks very doable, right? So then, by constellation of nuclei, you should be able to identify uh, tubules. Okay, that's doable. Okay. On the other hand, if you know where tubule is, uh, it helps you find the nuclei. So I imagine some sort of a probabilistic joint model uh, of this image, which to each pixel assigns a probability that this pixel is within the nucleus versus within the tubule of certain kind, which would have uh, uh, some sort of a um, prior built-in on sizes of nuclei and sizes of different objects. Does that make sense to you? Mm, I think it makes. But uh, the final, the final uh, task is not quite clear. What do you want to uh, predict, uh, or what uh, uh, inference do you? Mm. Um. I, I, I think I know what, what you're asking. Ba basically, what we're doing by segmenting regions or biological structures of interest, we have a tool that measures protein and lipid quantitatively um, with spatial data, which is the only tool of its kind um, that exists. So we want to use this tool to help make a map of how protein and lipid are distributed among cell types or structures within organs across lifespan. Um, and that will help us um, much uh, with much more insight understand how lipid is implicated in accelerating age or the pathology of age. Um, so that's kind of our end goal is to use this to explain biology. Uh, well, you need some interpretation from from this model. Uh, basically, I thought about uh, what if we have, for example, uh, healthy tissues and uh, sick tissues. We just could uh, do binary classification with uh, some kind of transformer models, uh, which build. Uh, dependencies between visual features inside and uh, perform some exploration uh, on mm, on weight uh, model weight level for example slice by layers and uh, see and uh, explore activations 
Colleagues, I, I have a suggestion. We've been talking for over an hour. Um, I think we need on our side to uh, make a clearer uh, a challenge. Um, so we will work on uh, perhaps improving the definition. Uh, you could already go and get uh, the data from Kaggle, uh, just some sample data, and get back to us with specific questions. And then maybe we could uh, um, have another one of these meetings for people who are still interested and um, uh, have a more pointed discussion. How about that? Yeah, that's a great idea. All right. So l let's uh, thank Will again for the presentation and say goodbye for now. Will, thank you very much. Vanit also, thank you very much. Thank thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot. So, uh, colleagues, uh, you can write questions in the chat. Uh, the logo, there is Ksenia and uh, sometimes Leonid, and, uh, or I can send them questions. So, you are welcome to kind of. Uh, just a small question. When you will publish the annotations on Kaggle? Uh, it's to Will, probably. Uh, I can. Uh, we didn't think about publishing the annotation. Actually, we we make this Kaggle competition only just to uh, <laughs> what, we still did Kaggle through process to be published done, so we if we do stress with someone to stress the video, someone will get the data done easily and easily. What? We have the what? Yeah, notation that we did with hands. I did with hands. What? Если, если, ну, то есть мы можем найти способы, мы просто не хотели делать настоящие как бы, соревнования с, с, с ошибки, чтобы это все было, потому что это бы потребовало очень много времени, чтобы понять, как правильно это высчитывать. Вот. Поэтому мы пока не тратили это время. Вот. Но если, если у вас есть какие-то идеи и предложения, мы можем, можем поделиться а почему бы нам не выложить аннотированные данные несколько примеров аннотированных данных туда ну да наверное можно но при этом наверное то есть я удивлен что их там нету я думал что конечно когда мы сделали этот кагал мы положили примеры аннотированных данных туда Короче, добавим обязательно, окей? Okay? Замечательно. Замечательно. Окей. Okay. Yeah, it's an oversight. Well, we should definitely put, put a, uh, add a few annotated images to Kaggle for people to yeah. examine. You can do that. Okay. Good. All right. I, I, I need to move on. Thank you, everybody, and, and goodbye. Okay, so let us uh, close this meeting. Thank you very much again. And so let us keep in contact, probably you'll organize the next meeting. Thank you very much again.